Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura and I am a starch girl. As long as the fabric is not a dry clean only, I like to starch it. I find the starching does a couple of things for me. Number one, it makes my cutting and my sewing more accurate. Almost like a piece of paper when you cut it, it is what it is. It doesn't really stretch out of shape. So the starch puts some body and holds those fibers together while we're working on it. But over the last couple of weeks, I have been using a new starch. The company is not new. It's been around for a long, long time. You might recognize them as Niagara starch. So the company has been around for a very long time, but they have come out with a formula which they call their magic quilting and crafting spray. It has no scents at all. Matter of fact, you can't buy it with a scent. And the other thing is it's flake free. So it doesn't matter how much I put on layer after layer, it's not flaking. These are two things that I really like about this product. Now, I don't mind scents, but I just don't feel I need the extra scent in my fabric. The quilting and craft spray comes in a liquid that you can get a refillable bottle and you can get a big gallon if you really like starch. It does come in a small portable size, which Yes, I've been known to bring a little starch with me while I'm on vacation because sometimes we do need to press when we're away from home. The size is also good for retreats and sewing days. You can also get it in this pressurized can. It's not an aerosol, but it is pressurized. And if you really like a very fine mist, you can get a bottle to fill that has that very fine mist. So there are many different ways that you can buy it, depending on how you like using it. Now, I'd like to take this time and share some of my favorite tips on using starch and pressing. My very first tip is where do you starch? I like to starch and press from the backside. That is just a personal option, but there is a reason and I have been pressing from the back for years. The reason is I don't always know what is on the bottom of my iron. Now I do like to try to keep my iron clean, but you just never know. And it's not something that I look at before I pick it up and iron. I usually just pick it up and start ironing. So if something happened to be on that, it will go on my fabric. So I'd rather it on the back than the front. The next tip is we want to spray anywhere between eight to 10 inches. We do not need to go close because then we're saturating in a small area. If you're too far up, you're getting too fine of a mist, which sometimes you need, but as a general rule, you want to stay about eight inches away and spray. So this is the trigger model. Once I have sprayed my fabric, you can see it still is in these wrinkled spots. I do like to smooth it out. I don't need my iron to do all of the work. I can spread it out a little bit on my own and I can feel where the heavier wrinkles are, which might need a little bit of extra starch right at that beginning stage. So I can feel this line here is quite high compared to the others. So I might just give that another little extra. And you can already see the big difference with me just moving it with my hand. The next tip is letting that starch soak in. So we want the fibers to absorb that starch. The next thing is the direction of pressing. We have three directions in our fabric. We have the lengthwise grain, and that we can tell by the salvage. We have the width of the fabric, and then we have a 45 degree. 
Now the 45 degree angle, of course, stretches the most. The width of the fabric stretches next, but the length of the fabric barely stretches at all. So that's the direction we want to press in. So if you have a piece of fabric and you don't have the selvage, you can just tug your sides and you will be able to see which direction you can press in. So I'm going to press on the 45 degree angle and you're going to be able to see how that fabric can distort. As we're pressing, you can see where that fabric bundles up and I have a little stretch right here. So if I go here, you can really see where that fabric has bowed out. If I press the width, it's not stretching as much, but if I press along that length, it won't stretch at all. It's because that is the least amount of stretch that we're going to get. Now there are times that I will need to do a second pressing and sometimes I will then turn it around and press from the right side. So I'll press from the right side if I really need to make sure that I have that really stubborn wrinkle out, and in this case it did come out, or if I'm filming and I want you to see the nice part of the fabric. If I need to press a pile of fat quarters, I do have a little way that I like to do it. And I'm going to use this aerosol type of container so you can see what that spray looks like. It has a very light spray. So I'll spray one piece. I'll get the next spray. And I'm going to continue spraying these pieces for about five or six pieces. And then I flip this over and start with that back piece. That gives this pile a chance to absorb that starch. Once I get that one piece done, I can go and press the second. And pressing on that lengthwise actually helps those wrinkles come out even more. The other container we can get, which we can fill, is still has a liquid in it, but it builds up a pressure and does a very fine mist. So we're actually going to pump that handle and it almost continues to spray for us. So if I pump this a couple of times, see it keeps going. Now that's definitely very saturated, but you get the idea on where we can pump this and give a big piece of spray so we're not always having to do that trigger. So here is a very wet spot and normally we let that soak in but if I go over top and press it has not given me any flaking and for my fat quarters I will just press one right over top of another. Another reason that I like to pre-starch my fabric before I cut it out is it does help me keep my things in line, it prevents that fabric from stretching, and I don't have to press as often. So I have this all ready together and finger press. So I can just press with my finger that seam. And that's really all I need. I don't need to get that big iron down and press. By just doing this finger pressing, I can make sure that I don't have a little fold over and that my seam is right along that stitching line. So those are the things that I do as I am pressing and starching. I do like this liquid form and I also like this extra pump container. It has a very fine mist and the trigger is very easy to use. If you get a chance to try this magic spray, I definitely think it would be worth giving it a try. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe. I'm on Instagram, Facebook. I have a newsletter. It's all free under So Very Easy. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.